children this video is about uh, looping concept in uh, python programming using jupyter notebook so loop is a special uh, concept that allows us to repeat a block of code multiple times and there are various use uh, various uses of loops so let's say you want to repeat a block of code or set of statements if a certain condition is true that's the condition uh, that's a situation where you may need loop and let's say you want to repeat a procedure of each element in a sequence um, and the third one if you want to repeat a procedure that means a set of uh, statements or instructions for a specific number of times we are going to explore all these criteria where we need the use of looping uh, statements or looping uh, concepts and there are different types of loops uh, so first we are going to explore about the while loop and uh, this is used particularly to repeat a block of code while a certain condition is true so the statement syntax is highlighted um, portion so a while keyword is needed then after that you need to place a condition and if the condition is true you need to execute the statements inside the loop let's see one example for this uh, so here what we are trying to do we are trying to get an uh, input of a number integer type from a user as long as a non negative uh, number is entered the number should be positive and equivalently continue to get a number from a user until a negative number is entered so let's start with uh, assigning the num variable for the number to 0 and uh, when the num variable value is greater than equal to 0 then we should enter a value so here num will be equal to um, it will um, activate the console to enter a number from the keyboard or from the user so let's say i will enter 5 this is a positive integer so now if i run the code it will show me this one you entered num so what happened actually here so 0 is not greater than 0 but it's equal to 0 so as the condition is true it went inside and executed these two statements and then it it went outside of the while loop and printed uh, this blank space and then thanks for playing is printed okay i made a mistake i think oh sorry sorry so here actually after i entered five what happened um it displayed the number as five and then again you know we are still inside the loop so it will go back again outside to the condition and then it will check whether 5 is greater than or equal to 0 so it's greater than 0 one of the condition holds true that's why we have, we will come inside and um, again we will try to input the number so, so let's say this time i will enter 4 so you entered 4 now it will go back again inside the loop now to the condition and 4 is greater than 0 again so now it's again I come um, came inside the loop and trying to execute this statement highlighted and it's asking to enter a number again let's say i will enter a negative number such as 1 then i press enter what happened here so it now displayed you entered minus 1 then it went up again to check the condition so minus 1 is neither greater than nor equal to 0 so as the condition holds false so it uh, will not execute the statements inside the loop it will just come to the end of the loop and then start executing these two statements okay so this is the basic syntax of a file loop uh, now let's see uh, another example where the user is prompted to enter their age and which is required to be a non-negative number so let me execute the code let's say is uh, i will enter 15 enter your is now it's printing thank you you entered your is as 15 so let's see first is is assigned to minus 1 then we are checking if the age minus 1 is less than 0 so is it's true or false it's true 
So that's why uh, that's why it's printing. Please um, enter your age and it will prompt the user to enter the age from the console. So that's why I entered a value 15 as the age. Now it's checking again 15 less than 0. Is it true? So it's not printing the, the statement as the condition is false. It's coming outside of the loop and printing the statement. Let me execute it. This time, let me enter a condition. Uh, if age is less than 0, so let's say I will just enter minus 1. Okay, so here see what happened. I entered the age and uh, see what happened as minus 1 and then it's taking if minus 1 less than 0 is cannot be negative. Okay, so now it will come back to the condition. So minus 1 less than 0. Again, it will prompt the user to enter the is. Let's say I will enter 2, positive number. So now it will check 2 is not less than 0. That's why is cannot be negative is print, not printed. And it's directly coming outside the loop and printing the statement in the output. This is how you can use the while loop. Like the while loop, we do have another one loop called for loop. And here, if you want to repeat a procedure for each statement in the sequence of a loop, then you may use the for loop. So let's explore how this can be used. The basic syntax is given in this way. For each item in the sequence. So it will go through each of the item in the sequence and try on executing the statements for each one of them. So let's see, we have um, a string greeting with having this value in it, hello, comma, a space and class. What will happen here? It will consider each of the character individually. So for each item, each character in the string, it will print the character individually. So let me run the code to see the output. So see what happened here. First character is H. So is H in the greeting? Yes, true. So it will start printing from H like this. It will each time uh, go back to the condition again and again until it reaches the end of the um, string. So when um, it will reach the end of the string, it will see that there is there are no characters left and it will come outside of the loop and stop printing there. And this is the output that you will get. This is how the for loop executes. Now, one exercise for you. So here, given a code. So this code, what are you supposed to do? You have to change the code to count the number of characters in the sentence, not including the spaces or commas. So you need to decide. These are the characters. Hello. Then there is a comma. There is a space. So instead of the comma or space you just need a proper the proper characters in the string so how to do that how can you print that you need to decide and uh, work on it to solve the exercise we have seen some of the syntaxes of list so let's see how to use the for loop in the list so we have a list words and these are the four uh, values inside or four items inside the list. So now I uh, we are going to iterate over or loop over each of the elements in the words list and to print each of the words individually. So when I run it for each word W in words for each item first it will go on and uh, extract book. So for book in words it will print book. For school uh, it will print school for computer it will print computer for program it will print program so this is how the um, a list can be iterated over uh, through a for loop now one example uh, sorry one exercise so you need to write a code that will output each word in the words list as well as its length so suppose this is a um, list given to you so actually i think yeah i have solved it so this is the list given to you okay and uh, so there are four elements in it so 
in order to iterate over or loop over all the words present in the words list so this is the plain statement that we did earlier now it's saying that you let's say you want to print the length of the words also so how to do that try it yourself now next using the for loop with the range function to iterate fixed number of times so this is a new type of uh, concept to be used inside the for loop so range function actually creates a range or set of integer values uh, within two values so what is this let's say you will write range of n creates a range of n values from 0 up to n minus 1 so let's say i will write range of 5 so here the range will be 0 up to 5 minus 1 that is 4 so the sequence of values will be 0 1 2 3 and 4 so uh, if you mention like this range of a p so range of values from a up to but not including b okay so this is how the range uh, function is used and let's see how to use it inside the uh, for loop okay so to understand a range object here i'm having a variable r it's supposed to take a range of values and here the n is determined as um, 10 so when i run the code and uh, trying to project or output the r list so what it will display 0 up to n minus 1 so that's why you are having 0 up to 10 minus 1 that is 9 so this is the least r is created by the use of range function if you want to uh, find out the length so there are total 0 to 9 is total uh, 10 numbers are there let's see how to use this range function in a for loop so suppose say you want to iterate over the elements within the range of 10 that means range of 10 will give you 0 to n minus 1 so from 0 to 9 you will print the element so this is how it is printed let's say you write for i in the range of 1000 let's see what it will print you so see there is a big box including all the numbers and it should start stop with 999 because the elements uh, numbers will be enclosed from 0 up to 1000 minus 1 that is 999 now uh, let's take create an uh, empty list the na name is numbers empty and uh, we are supposed to enter three integers okay so to do that get an integer from the user so for that i'm going to use the range function so range of 3 uh, will take a range of 0 up to 3 minus 1 that is 2 so there are three numbers 0 1 and 2 so for each i in the range of 3 that is for 0 1 2 it will ask 1 1 integer each time 3 4 okay so i think i enter one per line three okay this is the way so each time when uh, it asked me to enter the number within the range of three three times the box appeared i entered three numbers uh, into them and then see there is another one special function that is append so what it will do to the empty list that we created it will append each number entered by the user through the append function to the numbers uh, list variable so that is how it's appending one two three to the list and when you print the list now which is being appended by the three numbers entered by the user okay let's say let's see what is unpacking so unpacking what happens here python actually allows us to simultaneously assign each value to multiple variables so this is uh, this type of concept is called unpacking so let's see we have a list with three different elements so now here what i want from the list i try to assign uh, that is individual numbers from the list l to x y and z um, individually when i try to print it 
so see whether x and y are g g are uh, assigned with one two three okay so this is called unpacking but most of the times we don't use it okay so try to use the for loop always enumerate so there is one enumerate keyword this is a function which allows us to get a collection of index value pairs from tuples from a sequence of containers so let's see what is this we have a words um, list which has four different element so each for each index and each word in the words list it should print the index and the word itself so when i run the code so for first element it will print the index that is starts with zero and the word as well that is book now done with that again go back in the for loop check whether the school it's at index the next second index and the element is cool so it will do the same thing again and again until it reaches the end of the words list this is how you can use the enumerate function now next chipping so chip is another one function which is used to simultaneously look at values of multiple sequences so let's see how it works let me run the code. So see, we have code list, course list as three course lists. So name lists for the corresponding course list numbers are being added as three values like this. Now for each course in course list and for each name in course name list. Okay, so if we want to use the one argument from course list and one argument from name list we need to zip it together into um, a sequence like this so sequentially what it will do it will fetch or retrieve one value from course list and one value from the course name list tie them together output them in the output that's why it's printing on the first element second element and third element and here uh, I'm going to end this topic on this chapter. There is one exercise given to you. You need to solve it yourself. So try to write a code which uses this both course list and course na name list. And it will ask the user to enter a course number. Okay. So you need to write an input statement which will ask you to enter a course number. Anyone. This this or this so if you enter the code then your code will iterate through each of the list items and outputs the corresponding course name for for the inputted um, course number if you will input uh, csc210 uh, then it should output the corresponding course name value from the course name list so try to incorporate all the concepts that you have learned so far and write the code here in the exercise and we will discuss it later.